Hello everyone, my name is Chris Mars and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now today I have a very special interview with one of the finest men in rock music, the one and only Mr. Ricky Wilde, who along with his sister have sold over 10 million albums, have had 20 hit singles and continue to this very, very day to play music all over the world. Now today we have a very, very special insight as to how he actually wrote the Kids in America and he shows us the keyboard that he actually played it on, plus many, many other nuggets of gold and platinum within the next hour or so of this next interview. So please enjoy, sit back, relax, don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments down below and enjoy. Ricky Wilde, here you are. Nice to see Chris you. Chris Mars. <laughs> How are you, my darling? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? How are I'm you doing? Really good, actually. I've I've had um yeah, it's 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 been a funny old day, but aren't they all at the moment? Yeah. It's all a bit strange, isn't it, with the with this whole COVID thing? It's all a bit I know. all a bit odd. I know. But um, but I have to say, I don't think I've I've ever done as much talking as I have in my life um, since really? this pandemic because of these these lovely chats that we're yeah. uh, we've had. It's opened up so many opportunities to do podcasts and and mentoring for, uh, for for songwriters and stuff. So I found myself talking and talking and talking. I'm getting fed up with the sound of my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I know. <laughs> From being this really quiet, quiet little mouse that's stuck in the yeah. studio, doing, not talking to anybody, I'm, I'm now Mr. Personality. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and long may it continue, my friend. Long may it continue. <laughs> well, look, I, I, uh, I can't wait to dive into this because um, you've got a great history, and you've got a great future, and you've got a great oh. middle. So let's talk about uh. it all. Uh, let's okay. Go, yeah. yeah. Let's, Dive straight into it. So we're both musicians and we've both got things to yeah. talk about. I want to yeah. know about you. I want to know how yeah. you started in the music industry and what were your influences and, and basically what got you into music in the first place. Okay, well, obviously, um, having a, coming from a, a musical family, my dad being a rock and roll star back in the fifties, Marty, um, he's yeah, Marty Wilde, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, um, he's uh, um, he introduced me to lots of different types of music as I was growing up, and my mum, you know, she loved her music as well, so I was listening to a lot of um, Carol King, um, excellent, Joni choice. Mitchell, yeah. um, a lot of Elvis Presley, a lot of mm. rock and roll, um, and yeah, it was right. Across the board, really, uh, and uh, as I was growing up, I was listening to obviously David Bowie, who I was a huge fan of. Um, I used to love Queen and I, anything with lots of harmony, ABBA, lots of harmonies. You know, all yeah. those beautiful harmonies, Absolutely, and I used yeah. to, um, I, I really get off on that. So, um, so yeah, I just, I was just listening. It was very eclectic taste. I was right across the board. I wasn't. I loved rock. I loved punk when it came in and stuff. But, uh, but growing up, I was, I was just into so many different types of music, and it, it wasn't just one set of music and um, I was always open to listening to, to any type of music even classical you know so um, which for a kid was quite unusual um, but yeah I, I, I you know I was very lucky to be to have been introduced to, to music at a very early age. Which instrument did you start playing first? Piano. Yeah, piano I had um, I had a few lessons on piano I got to about grade five or six Mm. And um, and then I just got to a point where I was I was wanted to do other things, go out and play with my mates and stuff, and I wasn't yeah. practicing. Looking back on it, I wish I had taken it a bit further. But saying that, I, I think I got I, I learned enough to be able to do what I do now. Um, and it isn't all about just playing. It is all it, a lot of it is to do with programming and knowing how to get the best um, the best out of your instrument. You know, like with with, with guitar, for instance, I I kind of wish. I'd have had some lessons on guitar. I never had lessons on guitar. I mm. taught that myself um, mm. purely because Dad had loads of guitars hanging around the house, and um, I used to just pick them up and just. And I, I was fascinated by how they were made. I loved all the different woods and all the different finishes and the colours and the and the, the chrome and just everything about them. Obviously, the sound was was gorgeous, and and I just thought, I, I, really, rather than just looking at this, these beautiful works of art, I should kind of learn to to play him and um yeah so i was just i used to just pick him up and my dad taught me three chords little brown jug was the first thing i, I learned and um a d g and a and um mm. and then after that i just kind of like started experimenting and finding different chords and even to this day i still find different chords as i'm playing and um it's, it's infinite uh, isn't it 
It is infinite, and yeah. it's it's a it's a fabulous instrument. I, I love playing guitar. Uh, that's yeah. what I play on stage now. On the first tour, I played keyboards, on, on, but now I play guitar, and 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 I, I, I much prefer guitar because you can run around and you can sort of like dance with it. And with yeah. keyboards, you're you're kind of stuck there on stage, and you can't jump around and do sure. stuff really. Unless, so. you, unless you're playing a keytar. Of course. Well, yes, and, and our key, our keyboard player he does play a guitar, yeah. and um and and it's lovely because he comes down and we we all rock out together. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah, you're right. The guitar is for, a, for, is the, a for those of you who don't know what a guitar is. It's a guitar that looks like a keyboard that goes around. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. They're fantastic. And they're yeah. all back in back in fashion now, aren't they? They're, they're they really back. are, and uh, they <laughs> yeah. stopped making them for a while, and and I don't know why they didn't, but. Um, but yeah, no, uh, uh, Steve, Steve Power, big love to Stevie. I miss you, mate. Mwah. If you're listening yeah. to this, um, all our band, I'm, I miss them terribly. So, um, uh, yeah, but he's an amazing player and, um, yeah, with the guitar, he, he does all the programming and stuff and, and he's a very clever boy. So it's, um, yeah, it's a great instrument. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. And oh that, yeah. That, so we, yeah, I was digressing there, didn't I? I digressed from... Well, I was talking about my early days. Yeah, that's what it's so, all about. Digressing, yeah. not a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's <Yeah>. digress. <laughs> <laughs> Which guitar did, did did you did you own first that that was actually yours? My first guitar was a Spanish guitar, um, which right. I still own, um, and it's um, my mum and dad had a, a, an artist friend who lived around the corner. And um, he drew my name on the guitar, on the Spanish guitar, oh, wow. and and it it just looked beautiful, and um, so that was my very first guitar, and that was in, that inspired me to kind of like learn all the all all my guitar knowledge. It was a nylon um, string, was it? Yeah, and it's quite hard to play when you after if you can learn on that. That's definitely the best way to learn because all the guitars after that were a little bit easier to play. So it is, it's quite, because it's quite a thick neck and, yeah. the, and the action was quite high. So you had to really kind of dig in to play it. Um, but that was my first guitar. Um, but then my first electric was a Les Paul Jr. Um, right. A beautiful Gibson Les, Les, Les Paul Jr. Uh, which unfortunately got stolen. Oh, it was dear. a nineteen, yeah, it's a nineteen fifties one, and yeah. it was absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, and I miss it terribly still. But um, yeah, so that was my first proper guitar. It's interesting you mentioned that that was your first guitar because my first guitar is the one just over my right shoulder back there. It's an old Antoria acoustic with a thick neck, nylon string. Yeah, Had that yeah. when I was about 12, 11, 12 years old. And oh, well, there I, you go. I use it to this day. I was going to sell it a few years ago. Yeah. I wasn't using it for years. Still had That's the original strings on. And now yeah. I love it. I plug it next. I put it up next to Neumann. It sounds just yeah. as good as the day it was made. Yeah. Amazing guitar. Great work. It's your Fantastic. history as well, Chris, isn't it? It's it is, all yeah. part of your, yeah. of, your, of your rich life that you've had, that beautiful thing, all the, the your learning process and, yeah. and everything. You've got to keep all these things, you know. You do, yeah. It's like um, uh, this, is, this is something. Oh. Talking about talking is that the wasp? Stuff, um, is that the wasp? That is, um, that is the wasp that wrote. I wrote Kids in America on. Wow! So, yeah, that is so amazing. I, yeah, and this I remember is, those. Um, yeah, I wrote all Kim's early stuff on on this thing, and um, literally, it's it doesn't work on uh, at the moment. Unfortunately, I think it's a few little pots that need cleaning out. That's I'll incredible. get I'll get that done. But literally, it's you just press. It's like a stylophone. There's yeah. no proper keys. You just press it, and uh, and it's like the the contact makes the note. And also, you've got these sort of very. It's a very basic synth, and you've got this little LFO, which means that when you press it, you can have make a rhythm out of it. So you can go yeah. da, 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 da. So so the rhythm of it, and then you having two oscillators as well. You can put it in fifths, so you can like play chords. Yeah. Um, but they're neither minor nor major. They're being in fifths so that means you can kind of like get a feel of a chord but you can get the melody and hear the minors and the majors in your head and right. as, as a writing tool it was just wonderful so yeah i did all my writing on that and uh but again i i will never ever get rid of that that's uh that's all part of my history and that's um you know without that little thing maybe kids in america wouldn't have been born so, that's, um, that's that's amazing. It really is. It's, I'm really pleased you you, you showed us that because that that is history. 
That is, that, does that have to be in a museum? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, um, in uh, on Kim's last album, "Here Come the Aliens," there's a track called "Pop Music" um, right. that Kim and I, and it's it's kind of a, a retrospective um, lyrically. It's, it's about our lives, uh, loving pop music, and and how it it, it changed us, and um, we'll always love pop music. And um, mm. and we did the video for it, and um, uh, one little bit of I just lift up the the uh, the wasp, and, and there it is. Little, little oh, feature fantastic. for it, a little Excellent. ode to my to my synth. Yeah. Excellent. In fact, you started working with your sister Kim Wild. For yeah. those of you who don't who don't know, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Kim is your sister, and you started yes. working with her around 1980. Was that? Was yeah, that uh, yeah, probably a little bit earlier than that, but yeah, but around about that time. Yeah, yeah. How did that come about, and how did you feel about working with your sister in that in that context? Well, it's funny. I, I never really wanted to be um, an artist. And the reason mm. for that was because I'd made records when I was very young. I was mm. uh, about uh, 11 when mm. I, I brought out a track called I'm an Astronaut, which which did quite well. Um, number one in Sweden. Um, so I was kind of like a bit of a star there. And even now when we do gigs in Sweden, I get people coming up and saying, you record, I remember you doing that, I'm an Astronaut. And, which is hilarious, and um, but it, it was it was there was there were some good times there, but um, obviously when you leave when you when you kind of stop doing that and you go back to your normal life and you go to school and I went to an all boys school and was uh, I wasn't where in yeah. Hartford in okay. um, in in Hertfordshire in and so and it was an all boys school and. I, you know, I, I was getting into a, a lot of um, fights and stuff because my, my my face was on the front of Diana magazine and Twinkle <laughs> and all these girly mags. So um, it really kind of put me off fame. Uh, I just thought, I really don't think I'm enjoying this anymore. Mm. And it was great fun at the time. But, um, but because of that, it kind of left a bit of a sour taste. Um, I wanted to be involved in music and writing and producing and making music, but I just didn't want to be an artist. And right. so... Um, but I didn't at that time. I didn't really see any other way of, of being able to um, to get my songs out there. I thought that was for me was the only way I could do it was by being the artist, which wasn't ideal. So I did um, a few demos, like four or five tracks, and I, mm. I took them around to a few labels. And I had um, straight away, I had a couple of um, couple of bites and people interested. Um, and one of them was Mickey Most's label, uh, Rack. Rack, right, studio, uh, Rack Records, right. yeah, and studios. Um, and so I went to see uh, Mickey, and he saw something, and he said, "Look, come into the studio. We'll re-record these tracks, um, and we'll get another producer in to produce them." Which, again, I wasn't too happy about because I wanted to be, I wanted to produce them really. So, um, mm. how old so, were you yeah, at so, that time? I was 17 at that time. Yeah. Um, and so th the tracks that I was recording, a few of them finished up being on Kim's first album. Um, yeah. But they were, they, were event they were like me as an artist mm. singing them. And the producer then, a guy called Steve Glenn, I said to Steve, I said, look, um, my sister does backing vocals and I'm hearing some um, – harmonies in the, in the chorus is it okay to bring Kim in to record them or do you have someone else to record them and you go you no know, no no uh, bring Kim in by all means um, so Kimmy finished up um, coming in to record the, the backing vocals and Mickey Most just happened to walk in the studio when Kim was recording them saw saw Kim and started chatting with Steve and said Steve I think we could do something with Kim you know she's she looks good she's got a really good voice maybe we could do something with her as well and so straight away, that was my cue to think how now this could how how can I make this work for me um, as a as a producer who doesn't particularly want to be an artist. There's a there's an artist that Mickey is, is interested in. All I have to do is come up with a blinding track and um, and produce it up and make it all sound good and show him what I can do. Um, mm and feature Kim as the artist, you know. So that was kind of like the answer to my to my dreams, my prayers, you know. It was just like a perfect situation. So um, I went back home and told Dad all about it, and I said, look, Dad, we, we need to come up 
you know, try and write something for, for Kim, um, get it recorded and then take it to Mickey, you know. I said, but I don't want to do it at Rack Studios. I want to do it somewhere else because I want to just present it finished. Right. So, um, mm. Because I just knew that if I took it to Mickey, he might he might have said, you know, oh yeah, that sounds good, but I want to get Steve Glenn to do it, <laughs> which was really not what I wanted. So I thought, no, I'm going to give it to him, fait accompli. So um, I booked a studio um, that was owned by a band called the Enid. Um, yes, of course. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. that they were based in Hartford, and it was kind of like they lived in this like little commune. It was like this one massive house, and in the basement they had their studio. So they all all used to eat together. They all lived together. They all took it in turns to do the washing up and the cleaning, and um, but they all lived lived their whole lives around the band. The band was their life, mm. and um, Robert Godfrey, the the uh, the the main the lead the leader of the band and the commune um, was uh, was very um, engaging and, and fantastic help for me because um, obviously when I booked it out, I didn't realise that they had so many synths and guitars and stuff. So mm. um, it was wonderful. I, I walked in and there was an array of like Moogs and CS80s, Selenas and um, Poly Moogs. There was like so many different um, keyboards there. I was like, like a kid in a sweet shop. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and there was all these guitars and bass guitars. So I, ha I had access to all these wonderful sounds. And being, uh, you know, a massive fan of Gary Newman at that time, Ga and Gary was coming up with all these incredible, um, synth, you know, like our friends electric and um, cars and stuff, incredible um, sounds. And well, funny enough, you, you know, I used to write songs with Russell Bell from, from yeah. Darren Newman's band. And yeah. he, Russell used to own a Moog that was in yeah. my attic. He kept it up here for years. And that was, oh, wow. and that was using one of the original records. Oh, wow. It, Amazing. It was, it was Amazing. up there. It was knackered. We never used it, but it was up there in the attic for about sort of six years. <laughs> yeah. He kept it yeah. there in storage. And I, it never oh. dawned on me that what a piece of magic was up there, you know, the original yeah. Moog. Yeah, amazing, movies. amazing. But, well, uh, that that time is so inspiring for me. All these different sounds and production ideas that were coming out, yeah. and and I wanted mm. to, be, I wanted a part of that, and it was lovely to be able to have access to these kind of synths and and, and instruments. So, um, so yeah, so so we booked it out, and uh, Dad and I wrote Kids in America that night. Literally, we just we just yeah, uh, came up with the idea, uh, and the lyrics weren't written, but all the all the chords and uh, that I'd written on my little uh, mini. Mook here, mini Mook, yeah. wasp rather, <laughs> and um, so I'd, I'd we'd written the whole of the idea was in my head. So went in, in, into the studio. The first thing I recorded the bass, um, the the bass synth that bah, 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 on the intro yeah. to kids. That was all done on the mini Moog. Um, recorded the whole thing in one take. Uh, we then got a drummer, uh, Chris North, who is a drummer um, of the Enid, amazing drummer. Um, he used that bass pulse as the click, and he yeah. played the whole track to that that bass pulse, which is right. an amazing feat in itself. Um, and then, yeah, uh, uh, Steve Stewart he was he recorded the um, the bass as well. Um, I did all the guitars and I did all the synths, and I, I pretty much played everything on that. And then. Um, Kimmy came in and we recorded her vocals. Dad was writing the lyrics as, as I was recording the, the backing track and making it all sound good. Um, and then Kimmy came in and recorded the vocals. We did a mix, which I was quite kind of happy with, but mixing is a, as you know, Steve, it's a different animal to, um, to Chris. produce production. <laughs> it's go, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like, a, you know, playing stuff and, and getting stuff on tape is one thing, but to get those levels right, to get the drums and the bass and the vocals, everything heard and uh, put it in a place, it, it's kind of quite. Um, there's an art to mixing, is what I'm saying. Yeah, there's an art to it, and it isn't. It isn't just a case of just sticking the faders up. Um, but I did a mix that I was happy with, and um, I said I gave it to Mickey, and it just finished up being remixed at Rack. What kind of um, recording system did you use when you recorded it? Um, we had a, a massive, I'm trying to think what desk he had. It wasn't an SSL. Um, it might have been a DDA. I've got a feeling it might have been a DDA mm. desk that they had. Um, I think mm. they had a DDA at, at the lodge. 
Um, mm. But yeah, it was it was a beautiful desk, lovely sounding desk. The room was lovely. It's a very small studio, but it's mm. big enough for a kit and very dry and and very punchy. You know, lovely punchy yeah. sound. Um, they had a great array of microphones, so the mics that they used were really good. So, uh, you know, what was on tape was perfect. It just had to be mixed right. And Mickey, being the, the maestro of mixing, he's the guy. To, the guy was an absolute genius. Well, and he taught say, me everything. Uh, um, sorry, uh, I, mean, I was going to say it's, it's it's it is an incredible track. Just the opening few bars is is. That captures the 80s more than... Oh, it's very dramatic, isn't anything. it? It yeah. is. It's great. Yeah. Re yeah. Really well done on that. It's fantastic. It's, oh, uh, thank you, mate. It was really, really good. A lot of that is inspired by, um, yeah, obviously Gary Newman, uh, mm. Ultravox, uh, John Fox, I was a big fan of. Um, uh, but that, that whole... Oh, um, Eno as well. I was a huge, huge fan of, um, of Roxy Music. Yeah. And that whole street life, you know, street life... Uh, uh, the intro to that were all the street noises and stuff, and that's kind of like where I got the idea for for yeah. kids in America to get all those kind of like car noises. I think noises it was it was a very very fertile time then. Um, yeah, there were some so many great bands doing some great things. Oh, uh, and, oh and, fantastic! Uh, there were so many wonderful ideas that were yeah that that were everywhere, and yeah, it was so it was it, we were like I think as as a musician, you like. Um, just filtering through all this, all this wonderful, all these wonderful sounds, and yeah. these, these new technologies with the synthesizers were absolutely really, really inspiring. A great time. Was that? It's yeah, so and the inspiring. Pedal, the guitar pedals and all these wonderful yeah. new the space yeah. echoes and all this yeah. stuff was good, just great. And fantastic. of course, punk came along as well. So you had bands yeah. like the Pistols and. Um, and the Clash, you know, and Stranglers, you know, Stranglers. The Stranglers like, who uh, use who use synths. That for me, that was oh wow, you know that they're using synthesizers as well. You know those, those great sounds. That they uh, have. Yeah, amazing. It was all, great all those arpeggio have... stuff that he used to play. <laughs> yeah, it's just like yeah. genius, you know. And and it really, yeah. it was so inspiring because it, and that's kind of like um, I, I had a, a I was a huge punk fan, so I, I really wanted elements of of that, like the with the kids, you know. That was all yeah. kind of like um, Sex it's Pistols angry, kind angry of, um, of uh, yeah, kind of attitude, course, yeah. uh, which I loved. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so it was a cross between the Newman sound and the synthy sound, but mixed in with um, a little bit of punk. And then there's Kim, and you know, yeah. who who was just amazing. Her voice was so deadpan and mm. and very take it or leave it. And the attitude was perfect. And and her whole demeanor was just so cool. And um, it was just perfect. It was the, the whole all the all the little things. It was just all came together. And it was just a this big ball of fucking energy, you know. Yeah, it's great. absolutely, it's great. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Oh, yeah, you should definitely be proud of that. <laughs> oh, mate, I was. It's wonderful times, and and uh, obviously, we, you know, we did all the all the promotion for it, and that was another fantastic time as well. Go, hearing it on Radio One for the first time on Newsbeat, um, go, going out and promoting it, doing all the music garden in in uh, in Germany in the old days. It was like their version of Top of the Pops over here. Um, and, yeah. and obviously we're meeting bands like uh, Roxy Music, like my, you know, Brian Ferry was there, and and Sting, and the Police, and and Steve Winwood, and like, all the, all these amazing bands that, that I was, yeah. that, that I was a huge fan of all these these bands. Yeah. And there I was chatting with them, and yeah. you know, and they're all asking me about, you know, how did you get that sound? It's just like, oh my god, you know, it was wonderful. But everybody sort of feeds off everyone else in this industry, you know. Everyone has admiration for others, and um, I think yeah. that's the way it should be, really. Yeah, isn't it? It's uh, yeah. Th th there's you can take so much from from different artists and and use it to inspire you. Yeah, for writing, absolutely. And performing, and from playing certain instruments to production techniques, and it's it. That's the yeah. great thing about our industry. It is, is there's yeah. So much to take and. Every day is, is a new day, uh, yeah. and th there's a new idea out there, especially yeah. now when you've got so much music available at your fingertips. Without so much, your finger. so much, yeah. yeah. I, I I can yeah. honestly say that I'm probably more inspired now 
than I was then. And really? then I was absolutely, you know, blown away by everything that was coming in. It was so fresh. Everything was so fresh. But I think even now there's such amazing, beautiful, um, some amazing acts that are out there that come in out, like bands like The Midnight and obviously Nina, who who, who we, we know yeah. very well. Um, yeah. I, I think absolutely wonderful. And uh, Tom, as Paul, he's, he's another a young kid that's just come out with beautiful voice and doing incredible stuff. And um, Frida Sun Demo, and there's like all these new acts that are coming, and they've just got a beautiful energy and a lovely attitude, and lyrically so intense, and it's it's so inspiring. I I, I really I really loving music so much right now. I think right now, as you say, is a time when the uh, the talent is is really starting to come through. I yeah. think there was a time, there was a few years going back, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my opinion, I think there was a few years where it was just so awful and there yeah. was just nothing new coming out. It was uh, yeah, just absolutely. Regurgitated garbage that you just hear again and again and again, the same production yeah. techniques. It was just carbon copy of everything. Yeah. But now it really is, it's getting interesting and you can hear, you can turn the radio on and hear fresh stuff and 50% of it is really good. You know? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. No, no, you're right. There was a time where it got very dull. Um, uh, yeah, and I, I, musically, I, I was—I didn't feel at all inspired, and I I'd spent a few years in the wilderness, sort of trying to work mm-hmm. out what what I wanted to do. And you know, I was still making music, but I, I wasn't really enjoying it that much. So a few of the tracks I quite enjoyed, but a lot of them I wasn't really enjoying. Um, but I'm loving—I'm loving it more uh, than ever right now. Is there any type of um particular style that you you wanted to create that you didn't quite you haven't quite done yet that you you wanted to venture into um i would i would love to do a cinematic um there's a a, it's a band called air who i absolutely adore and they bought out an album in france yeah oh they they bought an, an album called moon safari I've I would it. love. It's wonderful. It's yeah. it's one of my fa- all time favorite albums. So good. I think I would love to record an album in that kind of vein. Something really minimalist, yeah, melodic, and timeless. Mm. That's what. I, and I, I don't think I've done that yet. And I right. really. I, that's what I. I that's my um, ambition. Excellent. I tell you, who's, who's very close to that at the moment uh, um, is Jesse from Lavenue. Uh, I, checked, um, I checked out some of his stuff. It's really, really good. It's beautiful. Really good. I'm beautifully mm. recorded, and mm. um, he's he's so talented and and so true to to his his what what he's trying to achieve. That it, there's everything is there for a reason. Every sound has been analysed, and ev- everything that's on that that you listen to has been thought about and really well recorded. And I'm. I have so much respect for for Jesse for that. His 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 heart is and passion is is uh, you can you can it jumps out at you when you listen to that album. It's so yeah. beautiful. Cherry Crush is the album, um, and and there's a, a few other albums he's recorded as well. That that was the first album that that turned me on to to Lavenue. Mm-hmm. But he's doing that's close to what I the kind of stuff I'd like to do. Right. Have you got a lot of material, new material that you've been writing recently? Yeah, um, as I said, I have been working with Nina. Um, yeah. I, I, her last album, Cynthian, which was a masterpiece, um, she she pretty much um, finished the album. Um, she was a couple of tracks short. Um, I happened to bump into her in um, the, the band, The Midnight, that I was talking about earlier. I went to see them live uh, with a dear friend of mine, Lee Bennett, who you know, know as well, yeah. Chris. Um, mm. Lee, um, he does his, uh, he's got his own blog called Teasers and Dares. And he yeah. had blogged um, about Nina's uh, Beyond Memory, which is a beautiful track that she recorded. And obviously he, you know, he said a lot of lovely things about it because it's an, and about her. And, um, and just before we went to, because we went to that gig together, me and Lee, and, and just before we walked in, uh, Lee, um, Lee said to me, he said, you know, you've just finished um, Aliens um, and you've got a bit of time off now before it comes out. What are you doing? I said, well, nothing really. I'm just going to be chilling. He said, you should, you should be working with, um, I tell you who you should work with. You should work with Nina. 
And I said, I love Nina. I, I, and I said, mm. I know what you're saying. It's got a very 80s vibe to it. And that's kind of like where my head is. And uh, Were you aware of her before? You mentioned it. Yeah, he'd sent me a couple of, tra- of her tracks and I and I really liked that. loved it, right. especially Beyond Memory. I loved it. So um, I said, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. And um, I will definitely think about that. And then so we walked up to the gig and Nina was in the queue. Um, and Lee said, oh, my God, that's Nina. I said, no way. So um, so then we got chatting to her in, inside when everyone was mm. in. We sort of, they were very close to us. So... Um, you know, Lee introduced himself and said, I'm Lee, I, I blogged your single. And she said, I know you, thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, Lee introduced me and he said, well, this is my friend Ricky Wilde. And she said, oh, I know you, Ricky, oh, wow. And and we just got chatting, hit it off, um, her and her partner, um, writing partner, Law, um, and she, who's an, a, also an incredible artist and, and a wonderful writer. And so, um, yeah, so we, I, you know, she said that they were a couple of tracks short on the album. Did I want to do a bit of writing with them? And obviously I've got my own studio where I am now um, in Hertfordshire. And so they, they came up by train and spent a um, couple of days here and we wrote two tracks that both finished up being on on, uh, on Cynthia. Uh, one was Run Away and the other one was Gave Up On Us, which are two tracks I'm very proud of. And, um, Excellent. Yeah, no, it's, uh, that was really lovely, and obviously she's she's now parted um, from that her her last record label, is starting afresh and is coming up with a with a new album and and uh, I'm lucky enough to be involved in that as well. So it's uh, it, she's she's a wonderful talent, a lovely lady, um, incredibly focused, and she's so driven, um, and I love that about her. She's really hungry. I love that. Mm. So, um, so yeah, it's great. It's, I'm, I'm just loving. I'm loving the the opportunity to work with it with someone like her, and um, and obviously we've got Kim's uh, greatest hits happening next year as well. So, um, that's going to take a bit of time because I'm I'm the MD of Kim's band. So, um, right. in between um, touring and gigs, then I'm in the studio working mainly with Kim actually, but but obviously um, with the greatest hits compilation coming out we're going to be that's what we're going to be concentrating on over the next year or so when that whole campaign's finished then we'll probably get into writing for the next album and and doing more so i mean kim's done 14 albums 14 studio albums i mean it's just colossal output so um so i you know she loves she loves the whole process of doing it and going promoting so um so yeah we'll uh yeah, I'm, I'm, we're loving it more than anything. Love it. Are you going to be do, are you going to be remixing any of those, those old tracks or putting them out as they were? I think um, no. I think we'll probably um, yeah. No, I think there'll be just the originals coming out. Um, there will be some new tracks. Uh, one one of them is uh, a track called Shine On um, that we um, that we wrote with uh, Frederick Tamanda in Palmer. Um, last a uh, couple of years ago, and um, we we recorded it, but then everything's obviously because of the COVID stuff, it's all been set back and set back and set mm. back. Um, but we've recorded that, and it's now a duet with Boy George, which is um, which is going to sound well, it does sound absolutely beautiful. It's all mixed and ready to go. Um, and there's all, all also another a new track, uh, that we've um, recorded with a, another new act, um, and that guy is uh, Tom Aspall, and yeah. Tom Aspall is uh, he's got a new album out literally today, actually, um, right. and it's a remix of um, you know like Dua Lipa did. Uh, she had her her album, and then she re-released that album with guest artists singing all the songs yeah. and mm-hmm. with a remix and a rehash. Um, well, Tom has done that with um, uh, Black Country disco and so he's he's done that was his album but he's now um one of the tracks is featured kim as a guest artist on a track called wm which sounds amazing and right. um so that's all part of that album as well so but in to reciprocate tom guest uh, was a guest on one of our tracks as well so mm. that that is a that's a lovely process as well he's a lovely kid and an incredible talent so um so yeah it, it's it's wonderful cuz we're just working with, with well new acts and established acts and and everything's fresh and it's wonderful we're just enjoying life so much excellent
Well, hopefully, um, we'll all be able to get back on the road again soon. Oh. <laughs> Although it's, it's, we have to wait uh, and see what happens. You know, it's it's hell, isn't it, Chris? It's especially it for 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 guys like us. That's our that's our life, isn't it? It's 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 in our blood. It is, but then again, you have got to. I, Look at the well. The positive side of it is that we can stay home and just keep writing and just build yeah. up that. Uh, yeah. That uh, just start, you know, put down great ideas and then record. Well, them we're, we're and lucky just... there, mate. We're lucky that we yeah. can still yeah. be doing, being involved in music, um, but in a different aspect. It's you know, and writing with Nina, uh, you know, it it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful experience. Obviously, when she's in the studio with you. It's mm. it's great because decisions are made there and then very quickly, and before you know it, you've got the track written. When you're working remotely, it's kind of it's, it. You still get the same result, just takes a bit yeah. longer. That's all. It just takes yeah. a little bit longer, um, yeah. but you can still you can still make it work. Is what I'm saying. You can. I mean, I've been doing a lot of recording from not just doing my own stuff, but for other people and doing yeah. keyboards and orchestrations for other artists. Yeah, and uh, I, I always have that feeling you, you know when you send off a file and the artist really gets off and think that's exactly what i wanted and they like and then they send you something back and they've changed it a bit and, yeah. and suddenly it's there it's like opening up a present you know yeah yeah <laughs> oh, yeah wow, the yeah. file's there oh it sounds amazing you know the way you've yeah. done that and there's still that that's um it's the equivalent i guess of the social media the, the, the like button <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know it's, yeah. that's the equivalent but as a musician yeah. our likes are when other musicians go that is great. I really like yeah, that. It works yeah. really well. And it's like, and you feel a sense of achievement, which is so important to have that. It, it, to, to come into a studio in the morning, have mm. absolutely nothing. And by the time you leave, have something that you like, that you feel. Yeah. That, that you're, that you, you've spent time and effort. It's a, such a, you cannot beat that buzz. It's, it's wonderful. It's, it's it is. from nothing. You've come up with something. You know, sometimes it's amazing. Other times, it you know nothing happens with it, or it's it's binned, or it's put on a back burner for something else, a later date maybe. You know, who knows? But at least it's something that wasn't there before you started, and it's 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 yeah. positive and it good for the soul, good for the head. Yeah. You know, because you're still making and creating, and um, it's it it's a great cure for the blues. My God, if you if you feeling a little bit down in the dumps to be able to come in and do that and make something and then walk out it just make it validates your soul and yeah makes absolutely you, makes you feel like you and and also not to be afraid to delve into uh, areas where you wouldn't normally go as yeah. an artist yeah uh, and i think that and that's not something that i think david bowie did just brilliantly you know yeah the, the perfect example of somebody yeah going completely off off track and just yeah. going down that road and then that road. And every album was just something amazing, not only by the fashion that he was wearing and the way he portrayed himself on stage, but but the writing techniques and, uh, and yeah. uh, the production, you know. Uh, oh, so innovative and and, and so and, yeah. and working with great people. You know, Tony Visconti yeah. was an absolute exactly. genius, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and to be able to pick these producers and, and musicians, uh, Ronson, mm. you know, all, all these amazing guitarists and um, that, that he worked with. And, and musicians it was he's just a genius and that is a, as important as the writing side is is knowing how you're going to pitch this and and the visuals and and the whole thing you know how you're he, he saw the whole thing as, as a an entity it wasn't just the song it was everything it was the image it was the musicians it was the producer it was the the touring the visuals everything was was in this amazing head of his it was but I think every musician has has that ability. It's just applying it, yeah, and, and stepping out of your comfort zone. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of us stay within our comfort zone, which is fine. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. Yeah, but occasionally we we step over that line. Yeah, 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 into into the void, and then we have to. It's yeah. like jumping out, wondering, is there a parachute on my back or not? Yeah, well, actually, there is, and, and it's scary. Trust in yourself, yeah. Yeah. it's scary, but it's so exciting. Well, that's where the gold is. Yeah. That's where the I mean, gold is. Going back to saying you wanted to make some cinematic music, I started doing this 
in the yeah. last sort of six or 12 months. Wonderful. Something that I've always wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, I'll send you some of the tracks. But Oh, I'd love to hear that. Very course. ambient, very inspired by Brian. I've listened to so much Brian Eno and John Hopkins and this kind Wonderful. of stuff, which is very, very different to the stuff that I write, the yeah. more commercial stuff that I write. Yeah. Um, and it is so inspiring, so yeah. inspiring. Um, and I've discovered ways of writing that I didn't even know I'd possessed um, just purely by listening to listening to these artists and getting yeah. inspired by them. And it's, it, yeah. it's great to have that. And once you start doing it, you can't stop. <laughs> yeah, but also um, well, the other inspiring thing is, is, is I've really been getting into buying loads of plugins. Just Me too. <laughs> different synths, <laughs> yeah. different it's drum it. stuff. You know, Perk X is my latest acquisition, which sounds amazing. And um, really? yeah, so one of I'll t- I'll tell you I'll I'll show you all, all my plugins, Chris. Uh, another time, oh, I won't do. I won't bore you here. But there's um, but there's some wonderful wonderful plugins I've I've been and so inspiring and it does. Well, one, one of the questions a, I was going to ask you was let's mm. talk about synths and tech. So oh, okay. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, go for um, it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I I work with Logic Pro, um, me t- Logic me Pro too. X, and um, I, I think as a as a production tool, it's just fantastic. You, you, it, it is. You don't have to spend a fortune to be able to make a fantastic yeah. sounding record. Um, you just need a little bit of know how. A lot of it you can learn on YouTube just by doing a little bit of searching. If you if you buy, a, I do this quite a lot when I when I'll buy um, a, a new bit of kit, and then sometimes I'll be sort of fumbling around trying to work out how it works. Sometimes it's best just to go on YouTube and just just do a search on it, and before you know yeah. it, you've got there's someone explaining how they how they work with it, and you think, ah, oh, okay, that's that. And it's just a, a great learning tool for me. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it, logic is is wonderful. I, I'm loving for vocals, uh, recording vocals, um, per, uh, doing all the comping and stuff. It's just absolutely wonderful. The um, comping with the vocals is brilliant, actually, because I did that when I was recording my album. Just I had about eighty layers of vocals for yeah, some of the harmonies. Yeah. And you just go again and again and again, and then yeah, it's just all there, perfectly, yeah. perfectly set out. Looks yeah. beautiful. Just take what you want, and it it's like magic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really and and you know, for years I used Melodyne, and Melodyne is a, is a, is a wonderful bit of kit um, yeah. for for tuning and getting the right lengths of of notes, and and just for making it all sound nice and tight. Um, but obviously, the, the Logic have have. Kind of, kind of has its own version of Melodyne now, which um, which is just fantastic, and it, it's it's like you can record a lead vocal, and the vocalist has gone home, but you need the harmony, so you just literally just drag the vocal that he's recorded or she's recorded, copy it over, and tune it up, and it doesn't sound Mickey Mouse. You'd think it would be like this weird. I don't yeah. know how they, they've worked out the algorithm to make it sound it's very natural. It's very yeah. clever. And so, you know, you can get all these great sounding harmonies and, and you can make it sound really natural without them having to come in and re, you know, to actually record it. Um, what I do a lot is, um, is work out the harmony um, by doing that, by copying over the lead vocal, and working out what the harmony is. And then I'll send, I'll send that harmony track over to the vocalist and get them to re-sing it so it is more natural and it is not the same vocal as what it's been copied from if you know what i mean so it's a you new know. file and ideally that's the ideal situation but sometimes mm. if you haven't got that option it you can use you can use that as a as the harmony as the is the final harmony and people don't you would never know you know it's very no. natural sounding. Um, sure. So yeah, I'm 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 loving that. I, I, I love working, uh, doing all the vocal stuff and the harmonies. I, as I said earlier, I, I adore harmonies. Uh, Abba and Queen. Um, oh, me too. You know the, the best. The, uh, it's it just, really is. It, it's, it's, it's what actually, if you think about all the classic songs, the real classic, ELO, the Abba ones. ELO, Jeff yeah, Lynne. It's all to do with harmonies. Know, yeah, yeah, it's just. Inc- I just love hearing those lovely big block harmonies and all those yeah. slow. Ah, all oh, those yeah. kind of like Jeff yeah. Lynne, how he does all those beautiful yeah. 
and you know all the phasing and all the yeah you know, all the effects that he puts. I, I, I just right. love it. So it it's, still um, sounds modern. It's amazing. He was ahead of his time even then, and it's oh, still the same yeah. production yeah. now. These yeah. new songs sound yeah. just like the old ones from the early seventies. <laughs> yeah, and the Tom Pretty Petty much. stuff he did, you know, and uh, Traveling Mulberries, you know, all that mm. stuff. It just sounded so beautiful and organic and it's just a, a, a timeless production you know and and he's such a great writer jeff lynn he's another one of my heroes you know and um mm. yeah so yeah so so i loved recording all the harmonies i loved doing all that um synth wise yeah i've i've you know i i kick off very basic with just a piano sound maybe with strings behind it to just to get a bit of a sound, a bit of a vibe and mm. a kind of work out the the melodies first and get all that kind of worked out. Um, but saying that other times I'll just, I'll just want it to be a production based tune. A lot of, a lot of, you know, it's it depends on the artist. Some artists depend on the production um, sounding record um, rather mm. than the song. Um, a lot of dance acts, it's all production, not yeah. much song. Um, but then, you know, you get other acts where it is very song based. And so that's, that's where you, I would probably concentrate more on piano sounds or guitar sounds to, to kind of, um, inspire those melodies and, and, um, lyrics. Um, so yeah, it, it depends on mm. the artist very much. So I find as as an artist who like myself has been playing so many cover songs over the years in clubs um those brilliant multi-million selling songs that i've had to play for the audiences in the past have filtered through into my writing yeah and i find that the best songs as you as you know ones you can just sit and play on the piano or the yeah. guitar nothing yeah. else around just voice and piano that that if if you can't do that then Mm. Either, either you rely obviously there's you can have tracks that just live with with production which are amazing as well yeah but a good song you just sit there as you know sit and play it on the guitar a few chords and the and that's it and then once you've got that foundation you can do anything you can stick yeah, orchestra yeah. on it yeah you can stick all the since everything you throw it throw it against the wall and it'll always stick yeah as long as you've got that foundation that's the best thing. Oh yeah, but it's so exciting to build it from from nothing. You know, it is when you when you and also when you that, ha when you have that idea. Yeah, you have, have the idea, idea and you it, have that beautiful yeah. melody there, and you think, oh, that sounds mm. lovely. And then you add it to the string parts to it, and then you add the pad, and then you have got the drums and come in, and then you have got a lovely snare, and then a, yeah. a, a lovely cymbals, swell cymbals, and it's before you know it, you've got this amazing sounding chorus, and it's like, oh. And that didn't that came from nothing, and it's it's uh, that it feeling is like it's just fantastic. It's a fantastic thing. It's addictive. It's addictive. It is. Yeah. We were, I was discussing this, this with Steve Anderson in my previous interview, and um, one thing I was saying was, when do you stop? When 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 do you stop? When do you know adding? it's finished? When, when do you know it's finished? Because you can go on forever. That's yeah, the thing, yeah. especially with the plugins that we we will use. Yeah. You want to try this sound? There's another preset. You have got tens of thousands of sounds that you can. It it sometimes it can overpower you, and then you get this sort of demo itis where you hear the same thing again. And oh again, yeah, think, yeah. You know, yeah. and then you have to have a cut off. Where, where, where do you find? Where, when do you decide? At what point in a song and the production do you feel that right? That's in it. That's enough. I, I don't want to do any more, even though you know you can do more. Yeah, you can add more um, or bring in other instruments. When do you decide to stop and just put it to bed and then move on to the next part of the song or, or another song? Um, I. I'm generally not too bad with that. I'm quite strict with myself. Um, quite disciplined, yeah. Quite disciplined, disciplined, yeah. But yeah. but every now and again, uh, buying new plugins is not a good thing for me because it makes no. me reassess everything I've done before. So then that means yeah. if there's a track that still hasn't been sent off for whatever reason and it's it's kind of like there and in my head I think it's finished, I'll buy a new plugin. I think. Oh, I need to put this on that, and before <laughs> I know it, I'm back. I'm back in the whole, the whole thing again. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. If, for me, I mean, it, it's good to be open hearted. It's good to be, um, you know, ne never say die with a track. Never say it's over. You know, you always be open minded with it, mm. and and give it a chance to be better. Always give it a chance to be better. It might not be better, but at least give it a go. It might be a. It might yeah. be even a lyric change that that. that it's a week or a day before you're sending it off, and you think, "Oh yeah. my god, that lyric is could be better. We could be, could have been this, 
could have been that. And then if it does, if it really does make it better, it's got to be done. And otherwise, you've got to live with that, especially if it's a big hit and it's being played on the radio and you're listening to it. Every time you hear that lyric when it oh, comes in, it's going to piss yeah. you off. So you or have to like make slight, sure. Slight bum note uh, or something yeah, yeah. like that. Or if it's, it's flat, you know. Note. It has oh, to yeah. be, but it has to be right, and because yeah. um, it's not fair, it's not fair on the song. It's you're not, you're not giving it its best. Ch- it's like having a kid, and 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 teaching it ninety percent of what of of something that you know how to how to cook a meal, but not not all of it. Sure. You know, j- just a little bit of it. Uh, it's not really fair. You need to you need to say, look, this is how you make this perfect. At least you've given mm. it a go. You might not listen, but at least you've given it a go. You've given it its best chance to get the perfect sure. pie, you know. So, but, but there are times when it can be over-egged. For example, perfect example is quantizing. There are times when you think you're going to quantize this keyboard or whatever it is you're, you're recording. Yeah. It's going to be perfect in time with a click. But actually... Yeah. There are parts of the song you don't want it quantized, but you think, yeah, oh, I'll do it anyway. But then, if you take, I don't know if you've had that thing where you quantize something, and then you think back, look back, and think actually it's it's a bit too syncopated. Then when you take the quantize out, just before you actually commit it to mastering, you think, <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, uh, yeah. it sounds better like this without, <laughs> yeah, you know, those sort of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do my head in. They do my head in sometimes. Uh, well, I, I've by the time I've got to the point of where it's being mastered, I've listened to it so many times. So, I mean, like yeah. thousands of times, probably that the whole thing. Um, and I just know by that time, if there's something still not that's bugging me. It yeah. would have been ironed out by like way yeah. long, 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 yeah, long ago. Yeah. So I, I do get that. I do get that. But thankfully, because I'm working on it nonstop until it gets to the finished product, I've kind mm. of gone past. I've worked through that. Those those yeah. quantized problems, you know. Um, but I do understand what you're saying on that one. Yeah, I, I'm very OCD with stuff like that. Yeah. Oh no, likewise. <laughs> when it comes, yeah, likewise. Yeah, very much and so. and hiss as well. I hate hiss. I don't like hearing oh, yeah. his on vocals and stuff. Going back to vocals, I was going to, I didn't want to interrupt you before, but um, a, a plugin that I, I bought a year ago, which you may or may not have, is the ADT from Waves, the Abbey Road ADT plugin. No, I haven't got that. Okay. Well, you ADT. have to check that one out. Okay. On my on my YouTube channel, I uh, I, I performed uh, Imagine by John Lennon. And yeah. I used it on that. Mm-hmm. You can never listen to it if you like. But that's. Okay using the original Abbey Road ADT where it was developed. Yeah. During, during the Beatles era. Yeah. That's how they, there was a great story as to how that came about. Yeah. Is and that it, automatic double tracking? Is is that what you're... Auto, well, yeah. So auto, it's kind yeah. of like a, yeah, like a quality yeah, so you, kind of thing. Yeah, so you sing, yeah. f- for those again who don't know what we're talking about, yeah. when you sing... A- AMS, like, it's like, it's like the, the old AMSs. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is another wizard Merlin miracle because oh, you just wow. sing into it and yeah. it's automatically double track literally. Yeah. And it's got the old, the old uh, needles moving left and right. As a, a lot love of these, that. Um, love that. Want it. Are f- yeah. I need that. You're gonna, you need that. You need that. <laughs> and there's another one actually. I need that, that in my life. About. Yeah. yeah. There's another one that you would definitely want is the vocoder from um, Arturia. <laughs> Oh yes, I know. Yes, yes. Oh, there's a new one there. There's a new vocal. In fact, I should. I think I should be getting money for, from from uh, these plugin companies. Oh, absolutely, there. absolutely, you should, mate. <laughs> absolutely. The vocoder. I think it's called Vocoder Twelve. It's got lots of brilliant retro vocoder sounds. The, yeah. the classic seventies vocoders, uh, yeah. and some new ones as well. And yeah. They're they're morphing into some incredible uh, technology now. I mean, yeah. what you can do with vocoders now is uh, amazing. Forget what Daft Punk were doing, but I mean, yeah. this stuff now is just beyond another another universe yeah wonderful that's wonderful. that's going to start filtering out into records so maybe it's something you can look at for some future productions perhaps absolutely absolutely brilliant. i'm always open to that but I, yeah no i always love trying out different plugins and 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 stuff mm. so that that is a yeah a bit of um yeah a bit of a thing for me yeah, it's a it's a nice little yeah. buzz when you hear something a new effect that you think oh wow that's great yeah yeah it's lovely we're, we're coming towards the end yeah um what before we go? Let's find out what you, the future holds for you now. What what are your hopes and plans for the future, Ricky? Ah, um, forgetting um, COVID exists. Yeah, let's say everything's opening up now. What what, what is the first thing you're going to do, uh, music wise, when you when you get the go ahead? 
What, what are you well, um, obviously, to, we, we've um, with Kimmy. Um, uh, I'm looking so looking forward to touring and getting some um, amazing. Yeah, just revisiting all the old stuff again for the greatest hits tour. I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. Um, a lot of the a lot of the stuff that we'll be performing, I haven't even heard since pretty much it was released. Okay. Um, and so, so a lot of these tracks, I haven't actually even listened to for years and years. So it'll be lovely revisiting them and performing them. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to doing Kim's next album. Um, that, that we that we haven't even thought about what direction we're going with that and where and how that's going to um, pan out. But I'm really looking forward to doing something new with Kimmy. Um, I love the idea of working with um, new synthwave acts. I, I love... I love Lavenue. I love. I'd, I'd mm-hmm. love to do some work with Jess. Um, I love working with Nina. I, I love bands like, um, yeah, The Midnight. I I absolutely adore. Um, Kids at Midnight is another another eighty sounding band that I really love. So um, I'm you know, but a lot of them. I tell you, I, I, yeah. there was a band. Hot, you know, Hot Chip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been going for years. Hot right. Chip. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're f- completely. Flooded with synths. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> so good. many great old yeah, synths. On yeah, there. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm really loving the whole synth thing, and and yeah, I've, just more of the same. Actually, Chris, I, I wouldn't want mm. any more in my life. I, I'm, I feel, I feel very lucky. I feel so lucky to be able to, to be working with all, all the people that I love working with, and I've got some mm. great mates in the industry. Um, and I'm and I'm meeting more wonderful people like yourself, Chris. You know, I've, we we only met <laughs> like a few weeks ago, and, and it's it's just yeah. lovely to have these incredible people come into your life, and you can you can change exchange ideas and production ideas and song ideas. Absolutely. And I love that. I love uh, that's what I love about this. The, the whole thing about the music industry is 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 you meet such fascinating people, and you learn so much from them. I love that. I love that. Yes, I totally, utterly ditto what you said there, and it's perfect opportunity to give a big thanks to Graham Godfrey for for creating uh, the group meetings that we the have. The super group, yeah, met. yeah. Graham yeah, Godfrey, absolutely, absolute it's, legend. It's, yeah, nice one, Graham. Yeah, nice thank you, mate. Graham. Absolutely. My old school friend when I was twelve, thirteen years old. Was it thirteen, fourteen? I can't remember now. Yeah, when we met and uh, we, we reconnected, and it's so good that. These things can happen. Oh, it's now. incredible yeah. what he's doing. Fate, uh, yeah. fate is an amazing thing. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And just, just, just grab it. Yeah. And um, well, I, and I'd like to. My, my big shout out is to Paul Tanner, um, who introduced yes. me to to Graham. Um, uh, Paul is um, he owns um, Alan Days, which is a, a VW dealership in Finchley Road in London. Yeah. And. I've got very very friendly with with him through some other friends of ours, but um, obviously I you know I buy lots of cars from Alan Days. I can I can there's a little plug for you there, Paul. And uh, but, yeah. but, but through Paul <laughs> we we play online poker um, using Zoom and Poker Stars. We kind of like play play every Sunday night, and oh, that's nice. where Paul introduced me to Graham. And and so it's thanks to Paul that I got friendly with with uh, with Graham and and the guys. So. A uh, big, big shout out to Paul, who's also got a new album coming out um, very soon. An ordinary boy. Um, he, he, play, he played me some of his stuff. Actually, I spoke to it's Paul. It's beautiful, a of absolutely times. beautiful, really, really good. Actually, yeah, he's got a lovely voice. Maybe I'll do some work with him. Hopefully, in the future, we'll see. Oh, uh, I hope so Love too. To be able he's to help so him out. talented. Yeah, be great to help him out. Yeah, yeah, he's really, so really talented. Good. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, excellent. Yeah, oh. so many, so many great people we've met. Aren't we lucky? And long may it continue. Aren't, yeah, aren't absolutely. We lucky? Yeah. And uh, yeah, we can we can cross fertilize ideas and 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 work with each other. And yeah. uh, who knows what the future brings? Just just keep keep going. And I yeah. think the message is also that we're never alone. No, you know, no. And there's it's, and, uh, and as I, as I said earlier, you're always meeting new people, and and one meeting can spark off so many. It can open up thousands of doors and you you know for you just don't know what's around a corner you don't know who you're going to meet you don't know Absolutely. who you're going to work with and and how it's going to affect um you know what's going to happen to that you just don't know you don't know and that's the the and magic so, yeah and sometimes the people that you think are insignificant are the ones 
that may change your life completely. Mm, absolutely. You just never know. Never judge book by its cover. Never. And just always take everyone as as an equal. Yeah. Not just in the music industry. Of course, we're talking about music here. This is about this channel is about music. Yeah. And so forth. But in every walks of life. Yeah. Is respect everyone. Be good to everyone. Yeah. And give and you will and you will receive absolutely yeah. and and you know a lot of that's the, the only way yeah you know when I, whenever i meet anybody who has a passion for music straight away I, I have a kinship with them that's how i met lee bennett lee, lee was a massive kim fan and i met him after a kim gig and uh, i just went out front after doing the gig and he he just came out and said rick i'm a real fan of yours and he started talking to me about some of the real real random tracks that we'd recorded be old b-sides and stuff and i said my god lee you are a real fan how did you know about that and and before i knew it he's saying oh and there's this and there's that and it just the whole passion of music was flooding out of him and i loved him straight away i said lee you are you're amazing and he is mm. he's an incredible man and um so he's he's a very very close buddy of mine now so i just love meeting people that, that have music as a passion and um it, I, I feed off that and i buzz off that and i love it and lee's got um it's te teasers and dares he's got his that's it that's um yeah that's yeah. lee's blog yeah and he also does yeah. um he, he there's met, uh, lee and i we have our own podcast uh called unsung heroes and that's um, and excellent oh thank you my dear and, um, it's excellent oh thank you but uh, yeah where we we talk just music and and with people that are behind mm. the the music really it's, it's the unsung heroes of the industry the the writers and the producers and um and yeah i, I just find their stories so so fascinating you know a, a lot of the artists that all their stories are documented because they're out there right. doing it um but yeah. a lot of the producers and the writers just don't and it's off they've got so many incredible stories to tell so yeah, that's kind of absolutely. where we're that's where we were with unsung heroes so but a lot of that was lee and a lot of that was lee's energy so um uh, you know big shout out to lee as well lee bennett fantastic so what i'll do we'll put the the links down below yeah and uh you can uh you can uh People can click on all the links. Wonderful. And follow the podcasts and uh, and everything else. Fabulous. And it, it would be, uh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. It's been absolute pleasure, Ricky. Chris, I've, I've enjoyed today. every second of that chat. I mean, Me too. Uh, we had a lovely chat um, only a couple of weeks ago, and, and uh, we were on the yeah. phone for about an hour, I think, weren't we? Yeah. We had a good yeah. old long chat then. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, I'd, I'd never run out of things to say to you. You're, you're a wonderful right. man. You're an incredible talent. And um, thank, thank you, you so much for having me on, on your uh, on your pod. It, it's oh, wonderful, thank you so much. Well, there are so many more questions I want to ask you. We just haven't got time. Oh, well, we but can we'll do a part two this. another time. How's that? I think this is going to be a part one and part two anyway. Uh, so we'll have to do a part yeah. three and part four. <laughs> well, I'm um, always here, did, darling. I, but whenever you want me, I'm I, here. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an absolute slut <laughs> when it comes to, to podcasts. <laughs> Going back to the podcast, your podcast with Nick Kershaw was excellent. Oh, I was listening to it the other day, and it's really, really good. Oh, he's a dear Lots of great stuff on there. I love Nick. As I said, I call him the governor. He is the best of what he does. He's a, a beautiful lyricist, an incredible writer. And, um, yeah, the governor. Yeah, Nick Nicky Kershaw. Yeah, incredible musician. Yeah, amazing. I love to And a wonderful man, a wonderful man as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so are you. Oh, on bless that note, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Let us say goodbye. All and, right, buddy. Um, you have a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, whatever you're doing today. And to everyone else out there, please follow my YouTube channel at Chris Mars Music and follow Ricky. And uh, all the links will be down, down below in the comment section here. Thanks for watching. And Ricky, I love you. I love you too, you Chris. You are the king. <laughs> and thank you very much for having me on. Keep on rocking, Yay. boy. <laughs> you take care, guy. Be good. Nice one. Be good. All the best. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Take care.